Christmas songs painting series. I've been working really hard at painting and illustrating songs and this is the 12 days of Christmas. I do realize that Christmas is a couple days over. I was so busy illustrating this and designing it. It took me a really long time. I still want to share it and hopefully you'll gain a lot of information about the tips and tricks that I have to offer through this process. Okay, but before we start the process of how I created this, let me first share with you the other four songs that I've had in this painting series. They are Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Silver Bells, We Wish You a Merry Christmas, and We Three Kings. And in all of these, I have painting tips and tricks, and they're, some of them are full tutorials. Yeah, and I'm using different mediums. Okay, so let's go through the five-step process of how I created the 12 days of Christmas in image format. Actually, I think you can put the design into two parts, but I'll lump it all together. So for the design, you have to figure out, you know, what your canvas is, and mine's going to be a 9 by 11 watercolor. It is hot pressed because I'm planning to get a lot of fine detail. If you use a uh, cold press or rough, you don't expect the same kind of detail. Okay, so I'm using a 9 by 11. I did tape off the edge because originally I was planning to paint the whole canvas. That idea evolved and changed and so I didn't do that. But I still had that painting area so that I could very easily visualize the white frame afterwards. I cut down a paper to exactly fit inside of that framed area and then I took the measurements and came up with three and a half by three and a half centimeter little squares times 12 squares of course to create my image or to create my collage and then after that I could start choosing my images and figure out how I was going to illustrate each of those 12 days so right 3.5 centimeter square with 1.5 inch margins around the edge okay my 9 by 12 is designed as far as the layout is going to be. Now to choose my images. So I went to Pixabay and started browsing. And I wasn't browsing for all of the animals, but I was looking for some, for example, the peacock. I don't know well about the twist of the neck or the colors, and so I was looking for a specific shape or angle of the neck, and I found a couple pictures. So I imported them, and I kind of did a combination with those pictures. And that was going to be my calling bird. So I just opened its mouth, stuck out its tongue, and there we go. Then I needed to get some pheasants because I wanted to have three golden rings and I just wanted, didn't want to draw rings, like wedding rings or anything. So I thought I'd put them on a pheasant. I didn't know the head shape or whatever the pheasant, so I looked up a couple of pictures. And anyway, this is the process that I'm often using when I'm gathering ideas for my next painting. Now, jumping ahead to the transfer of the paper, I'm assuming, of course, that you have already designed all of your pictures, all 12. So to transfer my papers, I don't ever draw on the canvas itself. It warps the paper if I have to erase. So I use a graphite pencil or graphite paper. When I say graphite pencil, I'll scribble on the back of a page and it will take, what, 30 seconds? It's really fast. And then I transfer those images very carefully. I do put a paper under all of the areas where I'm not actually transferring the image because any kind of a knuckle rub or maybe a brush or just the movement of your hand across, of, across the paper is going to leave smudges beneath and they are messy and really hard to deal with. Just avoid that. For me, when I'm painting, I have to have a color scheme. That means when I'm going to paint something, I have to approach it thinking about the colors I'm going to use. Am I going to use three colors? Are they going to be um, harmonious colors? Are they going to be on the opposite end of the color spectrum? How am I using these colors? And so I try to keep a very small palette or colors that are visually, you know, like harmonize. So here I am 
doing the base layer of all of my little 12, like let's call them thumbnails. And I'm trying to find colors that are going to harmonize so that as I continue painting, I will keep this color theme in mind. None of the greens or the yellows are really the same, but they all complement. They're all within, you know, the like an expected range. There's nothing that's really bright red and then a dull blue. So that is what I'm doing here. I'm just putting down like the color map of how I'm going to be painting. When I get this down, then I can start working on each of those huh, thumbnails. And I do apologize. Um, uh, my head got in the way here, so I skipped that part and just went ahead and moved to the 12th thumbnail. Okay, we're at step four. This is the one that's the joy. It's when you just put the brush to the canvas and you paint. You don't even have to plan anymore. It's already planned. You already know your color scheme. You know your images. You just paint. And you can see that I did a lot of manipulation with the backgrounds. I went over each of those backgrounds twice. I put down the first layer and then I smoothed it out. And I found that if I put a little bit of white paint in on some of them, I could get this really matte background, which was really cool. I loved it. I also have a couple of Turner watercolor paints, and I've, I don't really have a point to use them until now. I just like the color, and that's why I bought them. But they lay down very matte, very opaque, and now I'm in the market for a set, a full set of watercolor gouache. I really would like to try them. I don't want the chalky ones. I want something that's pretty nice. But yeah, I'm really interested in getting that matte quality to put a watercolor on top. And just in some cases like this, some kind of uh, illustration style. Okay, here you can see that I am putting in some of the last touches on all 12. You didn't catch everything, but it's a good overview of what uh, this whole painting was about. Now for the step five, and this is the one that I really was having a learning process on. This is when I added some gold to, just first I put it in the water and I mixed it with my brush. It was a mess. I tried to put it on the canvas and it wouldn't lay down. It was like glitter. It clumped and did all kinds of things. And so I was having a terrible time. Finally, I ended up mixing it with some paint. That seemed to make a really shiny paint. And so you can see that seven especially, that's what you're really focusing on because I, that's, I'm showing you the process specifically with that seven and the one, uh, 10 beside it. Uh, you will notice uh, the seven has red underneath and the 10 doesn't. So you'll notice that there is really not that much glitter or shine based on those three layers of gold that I put down. The one, if you can look and see, I didn't have a base color underneath, and so that is the brightest, but it looked, when I was painting it, like it wasn't going on the paper. So talk about irony. Anyway, I'm going to be doing a lot more experimenting with this gold powder. I thoroughly love the process, the learning process. I don't really know how to use it yet. Oh, if anyone knows how to use that, you can make a comment below. And yeah, expect a tutorial later on that after I figure it out, of course. Now, if you enjoyed this and learned something really helpful for your art abilities or your future, whatever, I would really appreciate if you would mash down on that like and also leave some comments. Uh, subscribe. And I will have more tutorials coming very, very soon. I'll see you again.